toward the top of the stretch. And they're into the stretch. And here we go. Songbird sent down. The holder is alongside. The seven-year wait is over. American foe. It's finally the one. American foe has won. He's just perfect. And now he's just immortal. Hello and welcome to the Capital OTB Stakes Preview for the weekend of March 23rd. Sully Crotty and Mike Callahan. Mike, how you doing? What's going on, Sully? It was a big weekend last weekend at Oakland, obviously with the uh, uh, the dual editions of the Rebel, and, and we saw what happened there, which kind of led us to even more questions going into this. So I'm glad we have the Stakes Preview, and as we tour America, we're going to uh, Fairgrounds this weekend. Yeah. <coughs> a lot of action. Obviously, the highlight is going to be the Louisiana Derby War of Will, who's kind of stamped himself. As a really good horse going into uh, potentially the, cripple, the Triple Crown Series. If he gets out of here, he could potentially be the favorite going into it with the uncertainty of the Bob Baffert horses now. So, I mean, there's a lot of questions going into it. We're going to go over five of the races in, uh, you know, at fairgrounds. It's going to be the pick five sequence as well. So, there's a lot to look forward to. <coughs> and kudos to you for last week for having rated our superstar. I did as well. Yeah. We ended <laughs> at the top at 3120. So, the. As we've talked about it before, 2019 has been a good year for the stakes preview. You know, we had a, a, we both liked the horse last week that paid 3120. So hopefully, you can keep giving you some good information. We have some replays of some horses that we like, and just uh, keep the train rolling. Yeah, and as Mike already alluded to, it's a huge weekend down at the fairgrounds, Louisiana Derby, and then you know the Phillies have a, a nice race as well. Uh, before the Louisiana Derby, but as Mike said, five, we're gonna have five stakes. All stakes are gonna be at. The fairgrounds, and the first one we're going to look at is race number nine. This is a state red stakes race. This is the Costa Rising, sixty thousand dollars on the line, five and a half furlongs on the turf course, and then we'll take a look at uh, the tenth race at fairgrounds. Race number ten is a mile and an eighth. This is the New Orleans Handicap, Grade Two event, a mile and an eighth on the main track. Uh, we'll move on to race eleven. Race number eleven is the Muniz Memorial Handicap. Mile and an eighth on the turf course, grade two event. And then races 12 and 13. This is the Fairground Oaks, grade two event is race number 12. For the three year old Phillies going a mile and a 16th, and that all leads to race number 13, Louisiana Derby, grade two event, million dollars on the line. This is for three year olds going a mile and an eighth. And again, we're taping this on Wednesday, which is actually a date earlier because of all the promo promos that we have at the Clubhouse Racebook. Uh, by the time you're watching this, we'll be fully involved in March Madness, so stop down to the clubhouse. Uh, but the weather looks pretty good down at Fairgrounds, so we're going to base it off the weather that we see on Wednesday. If potentially the weather shifts or something, uh, you'll know that at least we're taping it on Wednesday, and it was something that was taped, obviously, prior to the weather changing. So we'll go back to race number nine and talk about that. Uh, Non-graded stakes, the Coaster Rising, a field of 16 with a couple also eligibles. It's going to leave us with a, a solid field of 14 in here. You're going to see the field come up here in a second. And this is as wide open as, as a race as you could possibly have. The, number, the favorite in here is going to be the nine. That's Monty Mann at a lukewarm three to one. A defending champion in this race last year was running on the dirt, ended up going on to the turf in this type of situation, going five and a half. Came from off the pace, got an 89 buyer, got the job done, going clear by a length and a quarter. Uh, it's one of those situations, though, where this, the horse is leading up with a bunch of dirt races. The form has been very good. The trainer has been outstanding in these type of situations. In turf sprints, 41%. Dirt to turf, 43%. I think that's why you're going to see this horse as a favorite. But the turf still, to me, is a little bit unknown. I'm going to try to beat this horse. What were your thoughts on the morning line favorite? And did you go in a different direction? Yeah, I, I, I did try to beat this horse. And, you know, as you already alluded to, I, Adam Mosquita, you know, with the training connections, he has had a very nice meet down there as well. You know, and as you said, third to third, the 43% obviously does stand out. Winning next time out, 41% uh, as well. So I, I'm with you there. I'm trying to beat the horse. If you do like the horse, you're still going to get a nice price. I think three to one will hold in this deep field. But I did go in a different direction with the, the number seven in the Navy. And I do have a replay. We're going to pull up. Uh, two starts back, going a mile at the fairgrounds, and I've been a big fan at the for these fairgrounds horses cutting back, going back to sprint races, and we've seen it happen a lot. Fairgrounds is a tough place. Uh, fairgrounds is a tough place to go wire to wire in, and in the Navy, uh, two starts back, went from 23 
quarter to a 49 half and as you'll see here the number five horse just a perfect trip here adam biscuita was aboard that day now you get miguel manum with biscuita leaving but this was just such a perfect trip and the win like this from just off the pace i, I thought was very impressive so i've always been a big fan of horses cutting back the sprint especially these horses that come off the pace um especially in these sprint races you come off the pace on this long stretch run a hard track to go wire to wire i thought this was just a really nice performance at six to one to get it done in a state bred stakes obviously needs to pick it up a little bit i think if this horse gets a nice stalking roll like this trip could be a little tough to beat uh, that's the direction i'm going i like the eight to one price as well so i have in the navy on top i did go with uh, monta man in the second spot defending champion for the reasons we talked about the the percentage numbers are fantastic and we already talked about the skits adam the skits a, a nice rider down there and then in the third spot i did go with the number six horse Fame Feather, 12 to 1. I think it's a little bit of a wise guy horse. And if you're looking for a horse for course angle, this is definitely the horse. Four for five um, when uh, going wins and is running the money every single time. You're going to get a really nice price for a horse that's going to have to step it up. Uh, raced well last time out from off the pace, but uh, I, I do like the weight advantage to from 100, 119 to 113. So I'm going for a horse for court, a little bit of a bug weight a little bit of a bug weight advantage, and also from off the pace. But for me, I went seven, nine, six, and one. Yeah, I had a little different view on this race. I went 1, 10, 9, and 6. And we're going to see the replay of win, line, win. A, a horse that last time did face state breads in an optional claiming event. Went wire to wire. I thought that was an impressive performance second off of the layoff. The 86 buyer. It's not going to wow anybody, especially when you're taking a look at the tops of the field. But I think 6 to oh, six to 1 value that we're going to get in here. You actually go back and deeper into the PPs. Actually racing the grade 2. Uh, Woodford Sprint at Keelan against Bacaro, Will Call, a couple of horses that raced in the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. Finished a close up fifth, only beating a length and a half. Again, I think the price is going to be fair enough where you say a horse that in, is in recent good form in the trainer is a trainer that you're not going to see very often. That's Allison Ramsey Banks, who's only started four times at Fairgrounds, but she excels in turf sprints. She's 40%, so she rivals uh, another trainer in here that we talked about in Monty Man, who it just has unbelievable stats in this type of situation. I think the form's good enough, and I'll use that horse on top at 6-1. to one. Hopefully that price holds. The 10 in the second spot, that's wild about star. A horse that likes fairgrounds. Two wins and seven starts, including four for seven, uh, finishing first or second at fairgrounds. Last time out did finish second, beating a length. Got an okay 75 buyer. Obviously, he's not going to impress uh, by the buyer figure number, but it's Al Star. You're going to get Tyler Gaffleone to get aboard for the first time. And I think this horse is working out well. And the price, to me, again, in such a deep field that you're seeing right now on TV, you really don't want to settle for anything you know, under four to one, right? I mean, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that? I just, yeah, I, I, I can't settle on anything under four to one in this type of situation. Granted, the favorite Monte man, who's probably going to go off around three to one, deserves to be at that number. For me, I just want to try to beat it in that situation. Yeah. So I'll use the one and the ten as a little bit of value plays, and then underneath the nine and the six, both trained. Uh, by Ron Fox, the, the trainer that we were talking about who excels in these type of situations. The nine, obviously, for the thoughts that Sully already talked about and I did as well. Uh, definitely the horse to beat in here. And then the six is also trained by the same trainer. You're going to get Sophie Doyle aboard looking for three in a row. Horse that won against State Breads last time at Fairgrounds, going five and a half. The time was a little slow, 105 for me. Uh, needs some pace in, in this type of situation to get the job done, but is 12 to 1 in this situation, so. For me, I'm going to go 1, 10, 9, and 6. Again, your thoughts? 7, 9, 6, and 1. All right, we will take a look at race number 10 at Fairgrounds, which is going to be the New Orleans Handicap, a grade 2 event, $400,000 purse. You're going to see a field in here of 11, which is going to come up on your screen here in a second. And for me, you're going to have the favorite in here. Copper Bullet's going to be one of the favorites. Silver Dust at 7 to 2 is going to be your morning line favorite. I think Copper Bullet may end up going off as the favorite off that really impressive performance against Cold Front. Cold Front's going over for the Godolphin Mile in Dubai. I think people are going to be attracted to that last effort and potentially will go off as the favorite. Probably vying for favoritism again with Silver Dust. And, and, and Lone Sailor is another one you want to use in here. But again, looking at the field, absolutely wide open. You have a deep 11-horse field. What were your thoughts on the favorites? Did you try to beat them? Uh, I did go with Copper Bullet, actually, here. And for the same reason you just talked about, I thought it was a really nice performance. Uh, last time out against Cole Front, and then beat a horse that we talked about earlier in the show, rated our superstar, came back and won last week. And this is a horse that showed a great effort last time out. You get Jose Ortiz to come in town for Winchell Thoroughbreds and Steve Asmussen. I, I don't think the 4-1 is going to hold up, uh, but I do like 
copper bullet a horse that should be sitting in a right and really nice stalking role as there is some other speed in here um but i'm going to use copper bullet on top the number 11 core beliefs i think is interesting at six to one for peter Erton. a horse that raced in the haskell and then the pa derby we have not seen since september off the layoff 20 percent for Erton and a horse that's been working out extremely well um out of town so again off the layoff i'm not really worried about that this horse is faced a little bit better than in this field um including the peter pan that peter pan run against blended citizen i thought was a really nice race and the horse stumbled out of the gate this is a horse that really does not break well i think if this horse could break better and get a nice stalking role for laurent Giroux, who's winning 22 percent of the starts out at the fairgrounds i think core beliefs is interesting sitting right off the pace and then the eight the other speed in here is mr buff uh, Mr. Buff, we know from the New York circuit, and has been running extremely well. The last four starts with wins. Uh, and really, I thought the state, bread, the state bread stakes at Belmont was not a bad finish at all. The horse finished third that day with David Cohen at 10 to 1. Uh, I think he's faced against a, some really nice horses in New York. The Jazzle performance was very, very impressive, beating uh, Sunny Ridge in the big fundamental. A horse that beat Twisted Tom, Control Group, and Crew Chief, who's also in this race at number five. So Mr. Buffett's 6 1 offers a lot of value. So I like the outside stall. I like the horses sort of the front end in here. Um, and then I, I'm going to use Silver Dust. This is a horse that I did use in the mix. I think, believe I had second in that mine shaft last time out. Uh, and it was an upset winner there for Jack Gilligan and Brett Calhoun. So I had Silver Dust underneath uh, my mix. But I have three outside, outside stall horses. I have 10, 11, 8, and 6. I have a 3, 2, 10, and 6. And I actually think this is going to be a very hot pace. You talked about Mr. Buff, who's just a horse that's going to go. Is in very good form. That 102 buyer is going to stand out on paper. But... I think there's a lot of speed that's going to go with Mr. Buff as well. You're going to see Bandua, who's dual entered and potentially could go in here. Copper Bullet's not going to be too far off. I think that Noble Indy's going to be forwardly placed off of the second off the layoff and off that dull effort. There's a lot of horses on the outside that are going to be vying for that lead. And it could set it up for the horse that we're going to watch in replay. And that's Super Tap It coming out of that Razorback, which we just talked about with Copper Bullet. is going to be the five horse who's actually coming on the outside about sixth right now. Looks to come into fifth at this point, making a huge middle move to come up there and chase the leaders. And for me, what you didn't see was that the horse broke poorly at the start, was actually dead last, and then made this sustained big middle move to kind of come up to the leaders and then sort of flattened out. For me, I thought this was a huge effort. The horse was coming off of two victories in it. I think this dull effort is actually going to inflate the odds, which you're seeing for the 6-1. to one. Tyler Gaffleone's going to get aboard, was aboard for two uh, of the last five starts. So he knows this horse really well, and I just think the way this race sets up, I think it's going to set up very well for Super Tap It. And uh, I think you're going to see an improved effort from Mark Cassie and the connections here of Live Oak Plantation. So I'll use that horse on top in a meltdown. I'm going to use Lone Sailor because, again, just the way that I see the race, I see it as a meltdown. So I'm going to want to use the other closer in here, and that's Lone Sailor. A horse that last time raced in the grade three mine shaft and had absolutely no pace to run into. They went 25 and 4, 50 and 3, and 114 and 4 to the six furlongs. That's absolutely crawling. Lone Sailor pretty much at that point had no chance to win the race. Silver Dust ultimately won it. And I think it's one of those theories where if you just draw a line through the race and said there was no chance based on just the fractions alone, you go back to a couple of those victories, including the Oklahoma Derby, that grade three event at Remington Park. This horse absolutely knows how to run. Obviously, it's a name that people remember uh, from the Kentucky Derby last year and also the Preakness running really well. Uh, but for me, 9-2, to two, I think it's fair enough where I'm going to want to use the horse uh, in my top two. And then the 10, your top choice, which is Copper Bullet. Horse that doesn't need the lead. That's why I wanted to use this horse. Uh, can be versatile enough to be forwardly placed or sit off and stock in a nice roll. Uh, so four to one, Jose Ortiz, Steve Asmussen, who does really well down at Fairgrounds, 22% as you talked about. Uh, those are the three horses I want to use in my pick five sequence, uh, just based on the pace meltdown alone. And then six in the fourth spot, that's Silver Dust. I think it's just one of those horses that can absolutely hang in there. But based off of the race last time out, inherited a really slow pace to get the job done. For me, seven and two is a little too short for me. Uh, so I went three, two, ten, and six in the New Orleans. Your thoughts again? 10, uh, 10, 11, 8, and 6. All right, we will take a look at race number 11 at Fairgrounds. Another grade 2 event. We're going to have a field in here of 10. There are a couple that are dual entered that you're going to see in here as we pull up uh, the field for that grade 2 event. You're going to see the dual enter of Silver Dust, who probably won't go in this spot. This is a turf race. 
uh, for some reason it was off the turf, would en enter in this situation. And then Bandua, who we just talked about in the last race, I think may go in this spot just based on the way the race is going to shape up because last race I thought there was going to be a pace meltdown. This race you're going to see the headliners of Bricks and Mortar, who's coming off of that Pegasus turf win. And then also you have Synchrony, who's the horse for the course, Divisadero, who's always a grinder and comes from way back. But all of those horses want to come from way back. There is absolutely no speed in this race. What were your thoughts on Bricks and Mortar as the favorite? Did you try to beat them? Obviously, we were big on them going into the Pegasus turf. But I actually think the way the race shapes up, it's sort of a head-scratcher. It, it really is, and there's really not a lot of pace in here. Uh, I am going to try to beat Bricks and Mortar. I went 3, 7, 5, and 2. I went with Synchrony on top. I don't think we're, gonna get, we're going to get 3 to 1. I think this horse is actually going to go off as the second choice, but a very close second choice to Bricks and Mortar. And I, This is strictly... A horse for course. Four for four at fairgrounds. The turf course has run in the money 11 or 12 times and four for four at the distance. I thought last time out was an, a really nice performance by Synchrony. Uh, the fractions were quick, so the ho it was a perfect setup. Uh, but this is a horse that got a 100 buyer in a really nice grade three event. Uh, coming in from Del Mar off the layoff and to win that race, I thought it was very impressive. And then in the Seabiscuit, I thought it was a really nice third place effort as well to lose to, to Secretary of War and Caribou Club. So I, I think Synchrony at 3 to 1 in the morning line, I hope we get that price. It's going to be flying late with Joe Bravo and, and really does love the fairground surface um bricks and mortar i have to use and you know i got bet down in the pegasus world cup uh, i know we both like the horse there but bricks and mortar is going to be tough to beat in this spot you get irad to come in town for chad Klarovich and irad obviously really nice connections there and really impressive last time out in a yielding turf course i'm just trying to see if i can run past i think bricks and mortar will make a move before synchrony let's see if joe bravo can run down bricks and mortar at a little bit better of a price uh, and then the five i i need a horse on the front end in here because there really isn't any speed and the five is one of those horses that will be forwardly placed was forwardly placed in that synchrony race and went pretty quick a 47 and one in a mile and eighth turf race so it's fairly tough to wire fields i think dropping the couple pound i think with really not much speed in here we have to see what happens with some of these other uh, horses entered john velasquez can get to the front and really slow things down and make it tough for the two, the two short prices so i'm going to use some speed here and john velasquez a really nice turf rider on the front end uh, he really does a great job there. Lost to Mr. Cub a couple starts back. I'm, re I'm a really big fan of Mr. Cub, and I'm also a big fan of Limousine Liberal, but that's when the horse was running on the dirt. So, uh, I, again, I need some speed in here. I think John Velasquez and Mark Cassie have a nice speed horse in here at 8-1. to one. Uh, But for me in the, in the Memorial Handicap, I went 3-7, and 2. Yeah, I went 5-3, and 2, and I'm, I'm with you on the first Primero, a horse that I liked last time. Did all the dirty work on three wide both turns. They went quick that day for a mile and an eighth, 47 and one, 111. You know, that's that's moving. And Synchrony ended up getting the best of them, but was more, it was a quick pace. I think this race shapes up perfectly for first Primero. The only thing is I, I'd rather it be a mile and a 16th. The mile and eighth to me is a little bit of a stretch, but the way that the race shapes up, you could be absolutely crawling on the lead. It maybe turned into a jocks race and who better to have than Johnny V navigating on the front end. So I think eight to one is going to offer a very nice price in here. And I, it is going to hold because Synchrony yeah. and Bricks and Mortar are going to take all the money in here. You know, Bricks and Mortar could be one of the best turf horses off that you know long layoff has reappeared on the comeback trail and been absolutely dynamite. It's not that I, I don't think Bricks and Mortar can win in this situation. It's just the way the race shapes up to me. I love them a lot more in the Pegasus yeah. turf yeah. than they do in here. So... Uh, based on the value, I'm going to go with first premier at 8-1 to one on the morning line. Underneath Synchrony, who absolutely scares me uh, to no end. 4-4 four for four at Fairgrounds, loves it there. Did win last time against my top choice, first premier, but it was under a different circumstance. So for me, Synchrony, Joe Bravo, who knows this track very, very well. I think this is a must-use horse in the situation at 3-1 to one on the morning line. And then Bricks and Mortar. There's nothing really wrong to say about Bricks and Mortar. It's, it's interesting to see Chad having a horse down at Fairgrounds because he yeah. normally doesn't do this type of move. <laughs> no. Now with a horse coming off of you know a huge win like uh, like they had in the Grade One Pegasus Turf. So for me, uh, I found it interesting to see that this horse was in in this type of spot. 
the way the race shapes up and the way I think they're going to absolutely pound bricks and mortar mm-hmm. at the at the window, I, I'm not sure if I want to use them on top in here. But I will have them on my pick five. Right. You have to have bricks and mortar on your pick five. Uh, but for me, I'm going to try to use a little bit of value. So, again, my thoughts were five, three, seven, and two. Your thoughts again? I went three, seven, five, and two. All right. That's going to bring us to our break. When we come back, we'll take a look at two more at Fairgrounds. We're going to take a look at the Fairgrounds Oaks and the big one at Louisiana Derby. It may be cold in the Northeast, but in South Florida, the action's hot. This winter, be part of the championship meet at Gulfstream Park, where the fields are deep and the payouts are big. With some of the most competitive turf racing in America, Gulfstream Park is your winter destination for the finest in championship thoroughbred horse racing. And if you're looking for the top jockeys and best trainers, you'll find them all at Gulfstream Park. So play it today. Gulfstream Park. Champions start here. Here in upstate New York, no one provides bettors with more wagering options than Capital OTB. Our network of ranch and easy bet locations stretches from the mid-Hudson Valley all the way to the Canadian border and west to central New York. So whether you need to place a bet, fund your Capital Bets account, or watch the next big race, all the action is just around the corner. A full list of our branch and easy bet locations can be found online at CapitalOTB.com. Capital OTB, the better and most convenient choice for wagering in upstate New York. No matter where in the world you are, the excitement of wagering on horse racing is just a click away. You'll get live streaming, past performances, race replays, our virtual tote board, analysis and selections from professional handicappers, a simple, safe, and secure wagering platform, and best of all, you get track prices. CapitalOTBBet.com. Bet any place, anytime at CapitalOTBBet.com. And be sure to download our new mobile app from the iTunes Store or Google Play. Welcome back to the Capital TV Stakes Preview. Mike Callahan, Sully Crotty. We are halfway through the show. We are up to the Fairgrounds Oaks. And as we're kind of moving along this pick five sequence, I think we stumbled upon, which is probably going to be both of our singles in here, and that's Sarah Getty Empress, who's going to show up in here in the Fairgrounds Oaks, a grade two event, as the favorite at six to five on the morning line. Tom Amos, James Graham. This horse, dynamite last time in the Rachel Alexandra, which we're going to bring up and show you because there are three horses in here coming out of this race. You have Serengeti Empress, uh, who right here is going to be on the lead. Soft fractions, you would say, right? And then ends up opening up uh, mm-hmm. very easily. You have uh, what's going to be Arius 2, who's going to be splitting horses. Is about fifth right now, but is going to be trying to come through uh, to finish third. And then Loria, who's going to be in this race as well, is going to be the horse to get second place in this race. I believe is the five horse coming down the stretch. But it was all Serengeti Empress on that day. Six to five on the morning line, probably somewhere around four to five around post time. I think it's going to be very, very tough to beat in a situation. Albeit, if there's one thing that I will say about this race, is I don't think Serengeti Empress is going to get away with easy fractions again. There's much more speed in here than there was in Rachel Alexandra race. But still, nonetheless, deserved horse. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I, I agree with everything you said. I, I'm going to single this horse in the pick five, but there is a lot of speed in here. Florent Roux got some speed with Peter Erton that I thought was interesting. You know, I just think it's a big step up to go from the Santa Anita slop to hopefully a fast track in the Fairgrounds Oaks and, and trying to go wire to wire, but Florent Roux is great at doing that, and he's great has been great doing that at the Fairgrounds. So, from, to me, I, you know, I, I think it's going to be very tough to beat this horse, even with quicker fractions than last time out. If they run slower fractions, if this horse doesn't get the lead, we know this horse can, can be a little dangerous from off the pace as well. I just don't want to see a speed duel where the horse gets absolutely tired out uh, and then a horse from back, a closing speed horse goes to catch uh, Serengeti Empress. So uh, for me, that's my single. I don't think we're going to get to the lead right away, but I think we make a move halfway down the back stretch. Uh, and, and this horse is going to be very, very tough to catch. Uh, in the second spot, I did go with the six, a, a horse that ran third in that Rachel Alexander. I didn't think it was a bad effort at all. I just think it was a little bit too far off the pace. Now you get Jose Ortiz uh, in the irons for the first time for Steve Asmussen. So I think Jose is going to place this horse in a very dangerous stalking role. But at the, at the end of the race, just won't have enough to get past the big favorite uh, in the number two. Uh, but in the third spot, I went to the number eight, the same three that ran one, two, three in the Rachel, <clears throat> excuse me, the Rachel Alexandra, Wayne Catalano, 21%. Putting the blinkers on this one I thought was interesting. Blinkers on, first time blinkers, 33% for Catalano. So, I, again, I think this horse ran a really credible race. Five to one is a fair price, but I think it's going to be a little bit tough of a win candidate. 
So I, I think you could use the horse underneath in triples, uh, and I think that would be a safe play as well, as this one should be towards the front as well. Didn't really break well last time, was a little bit wide, uh, but showed some good efforts in that grade two uh, at, at Churchill on the slop. So we'll, it's going to be interesting to see who gets to the lead, but nonetheless, I think it's going to be tough to beat uh, James Graham and Sarah Getty Empress. Yeah, I have no objection to Sarah Getty Empress based on the last result. You know, it was a little bit of a head scratcher in the Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile Phillies against Jaywalk. I thought the horse would be able. It didn't sit a bad trip, but ultimately just wasn't the day for Sergei Empress. Uh, but as a winner of the three of the last four, and all of those three victories have been absolutely dynamite. So while I think this horse prefers to go to the lead, doesn't need it based off of that maiden special weight victory uh, at Indiana uh, when this horse was able to break the maiden back on 4th of July. But for me, uh, I think it is the right single to use in this, in, in this type of sequence. Uh, you know, Because you're going to have such deep fields, and no matter what the pick five pays... And no matter how much you put in your bankroll, you have to believe that there's going to be a couple upsets in the yeah. other legs, and it's going to be able to pay okay, pay okay. So uh, while I don't think anybody's going to be thrilled with a four to five single, this does look to be like the most likely winner. So I'll use the two on top and Sergei Empress underneath Eris to just it's going to be my top two as far as yours uh, yours as well. I think this is going to be a nice exact of somewhere around I don't know, eighteen to twenty five bucks, hopefully. Uh, and this is going to be an exact that I'm going to load up on because Ares 2 is the only closer in here that I really uh, have concerns of uh, as far as beating Serengeti Empress. I thought that third place finish was actually good last time based on the way, again, the fractions were. They went 24 to that first quarter going a mile and 16, 47 and 4. For Serengeti Empress, that's like walking. So for me, for this horse to be able to pass tired rivals that day, Got a decent 82 buyer. It's going to be 2-6 for me all day as far as my exacta plays. And those are going to be the only two that I use in the pick five sequence. Uh, but I will load up a little bit more on Sarah Getty Empress and some other tickets as well as the potential single. And then the four in the third spot, that's uh, Sweet Diane, a horse that has been, never been out of the money in four starts. I think is one that is going to be able to close and pick up some uh, minor awards in here, finishing third. Did Royce a last time finishing a third in a stakes race down at Tampa Bay going a mile and 40 yards. But... I think the buyers have been actually improving, uh, and if this horse is able to run, say, a mid-80s buyer, or even on the low end of the 80s, uh, may be able to get a piece of it in here at 8-1 to one on the morning line. So for me, uh, one of those races that what you see on paper is kind of what you're going to get. So for me, yeah. I saw it 2-6-4 again. Your thoughts? 2-6-8-5. and five. All right, now we are up to the big one on Saturday. It's going to be the Louisiana Derby. It's going to be race number 13 and complete that pick five sequence. Grade two event, and all eyes are going to be on War of Will, who's going to be your morning line favorite. The number six horse at 6-5 to five in search of four victories in a row, including a couple that have been very good down at fairgrounds. Uh, the last two have been two and a quarter length victories and a four length victory in the Lecomte. Uh, both of those, I thought the horse could potentially win by even more. We're going to see the field here in a second. But what were your thoughts on War of Will? We've, you and I have tried to beat this horse many times. Yeah. And every time he sort of laughs at us and just goes by every horse and wins by open lengths. I'm going to try to beat him again. I have him in the second spot. Maybe I'm just, a, I'm just a glutton for punishment. I have no idea. But for me, I'm going to have – he has to prove it to me one more time. And he has to do it under dis, different circumstances. He's had the ideal trip in both of the, the races that he's run in. And I'm not sure if you're going to see that again. Now, maybe it's just that he's so good at being able to put himself in that position – and he's absolutely very good at rating. So he's one of those horses where Tyler Gaffleone has definitely have has a grasp on getting him to relax and rate. Um, for me, the price is too short. And again, just the way that uh, I want to see him try to prove it to me in a different way. That's my thoughts on Warrowville. What were your thoughts? I'm right there with you. I'm trying to beat the horse again. Uh, I'm with you again. I need to see one more. Uh, I did use Spinoff, the number 10 horse. Uh, on top, and we I do have, we have a replay of we do have a replay of spinoff, uh, and this is from last time out at Tampa Bay Downs on February 22nd, running in an optional claimer, and this is a horse that he's the number two horse here, and it's just very very impressive. Tampa Bay is a very deep track, uh, so I think this horse on the lead like this, and it, it ends up winning by almost 12. I think it's very impressive, and I think there's another whole gear in here that 
we still can see from John Velasquez. I just think he had to ask for ask him to go a little bit because he saw some of the closing speed from the second choice and the one, but I, I, he's completely geared down. I think there's another whole gear in here. I don't think this horse needs to be as close to the pace as he was there in that optional claimer, but I do like spinoff, and that was a very impressive win at Tampa Bay. Uh, and Todd Pletcher was going to have his first start here on the weekend at the meet at Fairgrounds. So I, I do like spinoff on the front end in here. War of Will in the second spot. Again, Tyler Gaffleon has been riding this horse fantastic, as you said. Puts him in the right spots for Mark Cassie and Gary Barber. The last two starts have been very, very impressive. So uh, I, I'm going to try to beat this horse again going to the mile in the eighth. Uh, but again, that, that Risen Star was a, a very impressive performance and could be kicking myself. I'm going to let this horse beat me three times, but I, I do have in a second spot and it's definitely going to be on my pick five ticket. And then the eight is Country House and a horse that got bet down the 7 one from 21 in the morning line. I thought it was a very interesting play for Bill Mott. And we say it feels like every week, uh, every weekend, Bill Mott and Chad Brown are very, very good at set, uh, breaking maidens, putting these horses in these big um, stakes races, and we saw that. The Risen Star, the horse ran a very nice race. A very credible second place finish there for Country House. You're getting the 9 to 2 price. So, going to be interesting to see what that one goes off at. Uh, but the horse I did like, uh, Limonite, Limonite in the Risen Star, I'm going to use fourth because if that horse beats me and kicks me out of the pick five at a big price, I'm going to be very upset. You get Jose Ortiz in the irons as well. I agree with so, that. So, uh, um, I'm going to use that horse in my ticket in the fourth spot. But for me, I, I thought that, that race at Tampa, my spinoff was very impressive. Uh, I went 10, 6, 8, and 3. I went 8, 6, 3, and 9. And, and again, now that you've talked about spinoff, maybe I'm kicking myself for having them out of my top four, but I will include them now. Since I'm in a single Serengeti Epirus, I will include him in, a, in a, maybe a, a more spread out uh, version of this race to go a little bit deeper in my bankroll as far as the pick five plays goes. But eight, six, three, nine for me. I'm going to try to go with Country House. And again, you talked about the horse already, Bill Mott, Luis Saez. This horse last time did race against War Will, finished a really solid second and finished and passed 10 rivals that day. I, what I would consider moderate fractions. It wasn't overwhelming. When you go 112, and one for a mile and 16th race, especially with the quality of horses here. I don't think that's flying. I, again, we've talked about it already. Warwells had ideal trips in the last two. Country House ended up doing all the dirty work, was the only horse to really apply any pressure to Warwell, and then ended up flattening out a little bit to finish second, beating two and a quarter. I think this horse is on the improve, going to be start number five, the 88 buyer last time. Maybe this horse... Uh, it gets a better setup in this situation. I'm hoping that Warwell gets tested a little bit more on the far turn. Maybe it sets it up for Country House at a generous 9-2 to two price. I think a lot of people are going to try to bet this horse, though. May go down to about 7-2, to two, but nonetheless going to be my top choice. Underneath Warwell, for all the reasons that we already talked about already, absolute horse that you have to use in here and a deserved favorite of 6-5. to five. I know that we're not thrilled uh, with Warwell as a top <laughs> choice, but I know a lot of people that are. Uh, and I have no objections to that uh, whatsoever. And then the three in the third spot, Lemonite. We both liked Lemonite last time in the Risen Star. Finished a dull fifth. I, would, I really had no excuse. You're going to see steadied at the 316 pole. Uh, but I'm not going to give an excuse because I had this horse on top last time. Uh, really, it was just a dull effort. I'm hoping this horse can improve that buyer. Steve Ashbison, Jose Ortiz is going to be aboard for the first time. Brian uh, Hernandez Jr. was aboard last time. So uh, maybe the jockey change may be a little bit more forwardly placed in here. Because uh, there does seem to be a decent amount of speed in here to set it up, especially with the two that's in here who looks to be very speedy in here and maybe the target for Warwell as well. Uh, and then the nine in the fourth spot, Bankett. Bankett's a horse that I've always liked. Uh, was predominantly running against New York Breds uh, up at Saratoga and Belmont, but then tried to go down to Oakland. Uh, finished an okay fifth and sixth in the last two, but uh, I think still has a lot of potential. And you get a Rod Ortiz Jr. aboard, which is very sneaky. So I'm thinking this horse is going to get a little play, especially from the New York-based uh, patrons in here. Uh, so for me, I saw it 8, 6, 3, and 9. But again, uh, no doubt about it, War Will could stamp himself as one of the favorites going into the Derby if he can get the job done. Yeah, he de he definitely can. And it's a really nice 11 horse field in here. So really looking forward to that. Your card. thoughts one more time. Uh, I went 10, 6, 8, and 3. All right, 8, 6, 3, and 9. For me, that's going to wrap things up for us. Before we leave you, we do want to talk about Sunday. Now, we're taping this on Wednesday. Uh, Sunday seems like a long time away, yeah. but it really is. And especially when you're watching the show. Uh, as you are now, but we're going to have the Sunland Derby. We are going to be taking nighttime thoroughbred, and there does seem to be uh, some good representation uh, in the Sunland Derby, so don't forget about that. 
Don't forget to play that on Sunday as far as stakes action goes. Uh, again, what are your thoughts before we wrap things up? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I, we were talking about before the show, there's just a lot of action every weekend leading up to the Derby, and it's a lot of fun. And, you know, as you said, the show's been doing well, and we hope everyone's enjoying it. So uh, it's a great card at the fairgrounds. I know Golfstream's got a fantastic card as well on Saturday. Right? Yeah, so it, it's it's all over the country it's just great racing so uh and then next week we get to talk about uh, well yeah i mean just Derby, lined so. up the agenda we were <laughs> at oakland last weekend with uh, what we inherited was a dual edition of the rebel this week we're at uh, fairgrounds talking about the louisiana derby next week we will actually be live down for the florida derby mm -hmm. and you have dubai world cup night morning for us but night for them which we're going to be showing here so we have another action-packed weekend next weekend the weekend after the you one. seth myself uh, we'll all be going down for the wood, not to mention the bluegrass, not to mention the Santa Anita Derby, and then even even getting better with the Santa Anita Handicap, which <laughs> is going to be run uh, with the Santa Anita situation, all the cancellations. So now you have... And then the Arkansas even Derby. Even more loaded yeah. Derby. Yeah, exactly. Then you have the Arkansas <laughs> Derby. And then if you're light on points, you're going to have the Coolmore Lexington mm -hmm. at Keeneland. So, and Keeneland's going to open up here soon. So there's so much action. Uh, don't forget to bet it here at Capload TV. Again, if you enjoy the show, uh, we both have Twitter accounts to so reach out to us. Again, the show's been doing quite well. So hopefully you've been able to cash a couple tickets. Uh, and again, for Sully and myself, till we see you again, take care. You're watching OTB TV, a service of Capital Off-Track Betting.